All right, everyone, we are back with the Starcaster. This is the guitar that I unboxed last video. Actually, well, our first video. I unboxed it, went over it, assessed it, figured out what we need to do to it. And so we're actually gonna start working on this in this video. Definitely gonna do one video here. We'll work on the neck first, I believe. Um, then we'll do one where we're doing what we need to to the electronics in the body. And then we'll need to set it all up and get it playing, right? Um, so I don't know if that'll be another video if we do that one with the body, but either way, we're gonna get to work. So first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna get the neck off of this and we're gonna get ready to do what we need to do there. I feel like I've just kept saying the same thing over and over again. Uh, I'm new at the YouTube thing. We'll get it, all right? But for now, I'm John, this is Garage Guitars. <laughs> Okay, let's get the neck off of it. You can see I just popped a couple of screws back into the pick guard. And um, so we'll pull the screws, make sure they go into our plastic deli meat container. And um, I'll fast forward that while I pull this thing apart. Now, before I actually take this neck out, one little tip. Um, from somebody who's been doing this for a while. Be careful, all right, keep these together, flip it over, I'm gonna get this from above, all right, and be careful when you take the neck uh, out. Not because you're afraid of breaking anything or whatever, but if somebody has done a setup or something on this before and has put a shim in, then you want to know uh, where that shim was and you don't wanna lose it, uh, okay. especially if your setup was good. Now, interestingly, and I didn't know this, okay, but it does have a shim in there. There's a little piece of, was that on purpose? It's, it's metal banding, you know, the, the or plastic banding, but you know, like the banding they put around wood when they ship it or whatever, that's what it is. It's got like a little waffle pattern to it. And it was just kind of in there, but compressed, like it left an indention. That's weird. Well, we're gonna have to, uh, We'll have to work on that when we do the, the setup anyway, so I'm gonna toss that, but we may need to put a shim back in, because if I remember the action was a little high, so um, we'll keep that in mind. But everything looks good here, neck pocket looks good, and neck does, so let's take the body, and I'm gonna set that aside. We'll worry about that later. For now, we're gonna take a look at this neck. And um, the first thing that we noticed was that there was quite a bit of relief um, in the neck, I'm just sighting it, and yes, there even now is still a little bit of a curve in it. Um, and then the, we wanted to polish the frets and we're gonna clean up the fret ends. So we'll get working on all that. We also need to replace the nut, um, but I ordered the nut and it's not here yet, but we'll do that at the end when we um, do the setup and everything. We can do the body and all that before we replace the nut. Everything above that was fine. The tuners were fine, if I remember everything. A little bit of denting here. There's, we're not going to do anything about that. Although you can take a little like a wet washcloth and put a, a, a hot iron on it or a soldering iron, and maybe I will try to do that just on my own. Um, but not to, you don't want to burn the wood. But sometimes adding a little heat and steam to the uh, neck or to the where the little dent or divot is will help. Um, take a little bit out. I don't know if I'll do that or not, but we'll see. It's not bad, it's barely noticeable. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get this neck straight. And you do need a couple of special tools or at least one special tool in order to do that. So let me go grab it and then I'll explain what we're doing. Okay, this little doodad, you can see different variations of these things, but this is called a notched straight edge. It's um, obviously, has a straight edge along the bottom and then there are notches and they line up with, and this one is made to universally fit with a bunch of different guitars, uh, where the frets are. So the straight edge can sit on the fretboard without touching the frets. Uh, before you do any fret work, you always wanna make sure that the neck is actually flat. It's actually straight. Um, otherwise, it, things don't work right, right? You're, you, the tops of your frets end up out of alignment with your actual fretboard and it creates all kinds of issues for you. Um, so you wanna make sure that your neck is fret any, or neck is straight anytime you're working on or looking or checking frets. And we are gonna check the frets on this to make sure that they're level. 
Um, a notch straight edge like this, you can pay a lot of money for a notch straight edge to get a precision machine and that's a good thing. Uh, you can also get cheap pieces of junk that don't really work. So um, you need to be smart with this. I'll put a link to this one. Um, I got it on Amazon. It's the iLouise Guitar Neck Straightness Check Tool. Uh, clearly done by somebody who doesn't speak uh, English as their first language. And I, I got to tell you, when I got this, it was not straight. It was not perfect all the way along the bottom. And I, the way I checked that was on my, I've got quartz countertops inside and they're flat, flat, um, or as flat as you can expect. And I put it down and I could tell it wasn't straight. And um, so I use another tool I have. And this one is very important. You want one of these that works and is flat. Um, this is a fret leveling beam and uh, mine comes from Stumac. I know they're expensive, but you get what you pay for in a lot of cases. And on precision tools like this, I don't mind spending a little bit of money. Um, so what I ended up doing was sticky sided sandpaper on the fret leveling beam. And then I used the fret leveling beam to make sure this was perfect. So hang that back up. That thing's super handy and we'll use that from time to time. Um, but also, if you, precision work when you're working on guitars is ideal, but you can't always do it or it doesn't always make sense to pay the money for the tool. So let me show you what I used for a long time. That, <laughs> this is an aluminum, straight or uh, level from Lowe's. It's a two foot level and it has one side here that is pretty flat. It's not perfect, but it is pretty close. Um, and I used that for years, putting uh, sandpaper on that with double-sided tape or whatever else and was able to get things pretty close. But finally, I was having a little issues with this and I don't know if it moved or changed or whatever. And I said, no, it's time to upgrade and go with the uh, the Stumac product. So that's that's what I did there. Um, but suffice to say, got that flat. And um, so what we're gonna do is put this down and make sure it's in the center. And I'm looking for the light. I've got these lights for the camera, which is great. And it's touching on the both far ends, but there's a gap in the middle, which is exactly what I was expecting to see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a um, Allen wrench that fits this truss rod adjustment here at the top. And I'm going to tighten it, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And I'm gonna tighten that down until we get flat. All right, so let me go get a truck, let me go get an Allen wrench. And I'm gonna do this in fast motion. We'll come back when this is straight. Okay, that's it, it's flat. As flat as it's gonna get. These things, it's very hard to ever find one that is dead perfect all the way down, but just because wood moves, okay? Yeah. Looks good. Okay, so now that we know that the fretboard is flat, in theory, our frets should be flat all the way across the top as well. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get um, a tool. This is uh, a fret gauge, uh, action gauge, string gauge, whatever you wanna call it. Um, this one's from Music Nomad, I really like it. Um, and I'm, by the way, gonna post um, in the, com or in the uh, description of all these videos, um, just keep a running list of tools that I use and I won't put something in there that I don't use and that I don't like but um, Do what you want. Some of those are affiliate links too. So, you know, you don't pay any more But I get a little bit um, could put it back into the channel So um, what I'm gonna do is use this as a fret rocker and what that means is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it across three frets and then just kind of rock it and if you hear a little click a little clickety clack <laughs> and I have that that one's good um, then you know you have a high fret because if the ones in the in the in the middle is high, 
then it rocks back and forth. It's a fret rocker. So um, I'm going to go down, and then this has different radiuses so that when you get down here to uh, different distances, you it works, <laughs> and you're not crossing more than three frets. Um, but I'm going to go all the way down. I'm going to check, and anywhere that I have a high fret, and uh, I'm going to do it along, if you're looking from above, I'm going to do it uh, along the uh, the high side, down the middle, and then along the base side, because sometimes you get uh, one side or the other that pops up or the middle popping up. So I'm just going to run down, and anywhere there's a high fret, uh, I'm going to hit it with my uh, chisel tipped uh, Sharpie. It works out. The, the Sharpie permanent marker, and I'm just going to hit the part that's high, um, and if if we need to make any adjustments, well, we're going to do that too. So uh, let's take a look. I'll speed this up as I go down and check it out. Okay, I've marked all my spots. I'm gonna kind of hold that up. I don't know if you can see that from the upper view. Uh, nothing really, really bad. I've got one right here that is kind of bad. And and the, the reason what happens when you have a high fret is it creates buzz when you're playing. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and we're gonna hit these um, and take them down a little bit. And then um, we may have to come back and recrown them a little bit and I'll show you how I do that. It's It's pretty simple. And so, um, but before we do that, I wanna protect the fretboard. And even as we're getting ready to do some of our fret end work, we're gonna protect the fretboard. And uh, the way I do that is with blue painter's tape. So um, different ways to do it. Uh, I'll show you how I do it. Let me get my tape and my knife and we'll get this thing prepped and ready. All right, so I do it with this, you know, thicker blue painter's tape. Um, and you wanna be careful, you don't wanna, mess up your fretboard. Um, so what I do is I pull strips off. Well, actually, first thing I'm gonna do on this neck is uh, run one long piece down the edge. Hopefully you can see this from above, we'll get a good look. All right, now, are there more efficient ways to do this? Probably, but I am not doing enough guitars and probably you, if you're watching this video, are not work pumping out high volume of guitars where time is money and you're trying to shave every last second. You're just doing this probably for yourself and your guitar, for friends or whatever, um, and um, in your garage. So um, yeah, this takes a little minute, but I like to do it this way. Um, so the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take this tape, it's already got a straight edge on it, and I'm gonna put it right up against the fret, just like that. All right, that's it on that side. And <laughs> just wrap it over. And then this is where the uh, sort of trick comes in. Take the straight edge, put it on the other side. Obviously self-explanatory. Then I just take my fingernail and I run it up to the next fret up and just put a crease in the tape. And very carefully, very carefully, <laughs> all right, with a very sharp knife, go right on the edge of the fret and just enough pressure to cut the tape. I'm gonna be especially careful on a maple fretboard by the way and then i'm going to take the straight side that's left on this little piece of excess and come down here and that's just you know i don't want to waste the tape <laughs> so i reuse those pieces just remember which side's your straight side um now i have seen some uh guys who come in here with thinner tape and they put down one on one side of the fret and another piece of tape on the other side of the fret and um Obviously, if you do that, you don't have to do this cutting, which is good, um, but what you lose, you end up with, what it does is on the fretboard, it ends up creating irregular heights 
on the wood. And so I like to go back with my straight edge, my not straight edge and check again before I go making changes. And if you have two layers of tape in some places and one layer of tape in other places, then you can't do that. So um, I like to make sure that there's one layer of tape all the way down through so I can come back with that straight edge to check it. And when I get to the edge, I just kind of give it a little bit of a flip and cuts through the tape. And then I'm gonna come down here, straight edge on this one, same thing. There, and cut. All right. And discard. I'm gonna finish up the rest of this. We'll zoom through it and come back when we're done. So while I'm doing this, just a couple of things. Um, one, really appreciate it if you would like this video and consider subscribing to the channel. I'm just getting started off. So any of that that you'd be willing to do would be tremendously helpful. Just letting people know that this content is out there and letting YouTube know that this, what we're doing is valuable. So that would be awesome. Uh, I would greatly appreciate that. And uh, if you have any thoughts or suggestions, or if you think I'm doing anything wrong, feel free to tell me. I'll probably just disregard it, but no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Feel free to say whatever. I got thick skin, um, and I'm, I'm trying to improve and get better at this stuff all the time. And so take any little tips, suggestions, tricks, or whatever that you might have. Um, that would be fantastic. And... Uh, other than this, I actually do I do some other stuff with guitars. I My favorite thing to do, honestly, is wiring. And so I have a little uh, hobby called Palomino Guitars. And uh, I do custom wiring, harnesses, control plates, pick guards, build guitars from, the, from scratch, um, wine pickups, stuff like that. It's fun. So if you ever want something like that, it would be awesome. I'd love to talk about it. Uh, but that's enough blabbering. Back to the fast motion. Okay, that's it. Um, got that, and it is tedious. It really is. A lot of guitar work is tedious because a lot of it is prep work, but you know what? First of all, you will thank yourself if you do the tedious work to prep things properly, <laughs> especially if you have the time to do it, if you're not under a time crunch. Um, but then also, <laughs> it's kind of peaceful. Like that's part of this hobby for me is how peaceful it is to be out here and I hear the birds chirping and cars are driving by and there's something very serene about it as I'm just doing the monotonous stuff. But, all right, so we have this like we want it. Now what I'm gonna do is, uh, there's different ways to do this, okay? To take off the material that you need to take off. I prefer to use a file and I've got these, these are like cheap things. These are probably Harbor Freight or something. Um, but this is just a little metal file, very fine teeth on it. If I need something more aggressive, I've got a slightly more aggressive file, but I try to stay um, away from that. Good good rule of thumb, at least for me when I'm doing this stuff. I try to start with a minimal impact and only add if I have to, um, because uh, it is easier to deal with smaller file marks and things than it is bigger ones. So start small, work big if you have to. Uh, but the other reason that I like a file, you can use abrasives or sandpaper to do this too. Uh, the reason I like a file is because if I do it right and I'm careful, um, it doesn't leave the same kinds of gouges because this is consistent um, and a sandpaper is irregular on purpose. 
um, it doesn't leave the same kinds of scratches and gouges that a sandpaper can, and so I prefer to use files. Um, it's also the reason that I like the crowning file, which we're gonna have to use, um, that I use as opposed to a different one. I'll explain that when we get there. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my file, and I won't show you all this, but um, I'll speed through it, you know. Um, but I'm gonna take my file across there very carefully, and then I'm gonna come back in with my string action gauge fret rocker thing, and I'm gonna check it, and I'm gonna get everything where it's nice and flat all the way across. That's the plan, so be careful, go slow, and um, take it easy, and you'll thank yourself for that later. So here we go, let's do it. Okay, I have one good, but I mentioned earlier, one thing I forgot to do. I want to come back in and just double check that my neck is level. Perfect. Hasn't moved. All right, let me go through and get the rest. perfect. And uh, now we are dead flat all the way down. Um, one of the advantages, you know, why mark it with a marker like you do? Well, first of all, obviously it tells you where you need the level. Um, but when you mark it with a nice fat marker like that, then when you file away at the fret, it files away the top of the fret and you can see how much material you're taking away because you still have black marker on either side of that. Um, we're going to use that same technique to our advantage when we crown the fret because a fret needs to be rounded on top um, so that there's one point of contact with the string when you press the string down. If it's flat across the top, you can actually get a little bit of buzzing and create intonation issues. So we want it to be round across the top. It's called crowning. And so what we're gonna do now is in each one of those spots where we just corrected, and there was one that I had to take a good bit off of. It must have popped up or something. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go across with my marker, wherever I put that, put it away, and I'm gonna draw a line and cover the top of the fret with the marker so there's a black line all the way across, and um, just on the spots where we um, made our changes or where I made those corrections, and then I'll come in with my fret crowning file, and um, it has an arc on it, and you go, th you run the file across it, and what it does is it leaves a very thin line right in the middle of the fret. And when you've got a nice thin line down the middle of the fret of markers still sitting there, then you know it's crowned properly. So uh, let me mark this, and then I'll get my crowning file and show you what that is. Here we go. So you can definitely tell where we have filed away because the old frets are kind of, that's why I didn't uh, polish the frets first. They're still kind of corroded and gross and dingy and whatever else, but where I've got nice clean metal, I know that's where I was filing away. Plus there's still some black around the edges. So I'm gonna run a black line across the top in those spots. I think it's time for a new marker. I've used this one so much, it's got a divot <laughs> in the end. And where the, the frets are really flat, it's not even putting any uh, ink or whatever down on the top of them, and I have to go back. But, um, all right, so we have those marked. Now I'm going to get oh, magnets. All right, so there are two different 
frat crowning files that I have used over the years. The first one, and I had this one for quite some time, is uh, by a company called Baroque or Baroque or something like that. Um, got this on Amazon and it did a really good job for me, but, uh, and it's got three different sort of fret uh, thicknesses or radiuses um, slots. And I had the medium one marked with a little, I don't know if you can see that up top with a, uh, an arrow. <laughs> so I'd never get it wrong. And I would use this to go across. Um, but what I don't like about this, as much as I've used it, um, is that this has an abrasive inside of the little curved channel and um, it's very durable and it does a good job, but that abrasive creates deep scratches and that makes it a lot harder to go back and get the scratches out of these frets. And so for that reason, I don't use this one anymore. So that's not in the link or whatever, but if you're thinking about getting this one, it does do a good job of crowning. Just know that you're gonna have more work to do after the fact. And I'm not sure that using this, um, the money you save by buying something like this is worth it by the time you figure the time that you spend. Um, but if that's all your budget will allow, that'll do the job. Um, what I've been using, and there's more expensive ones you can get, but I've been using the Fret Guru Dagger 2.0, which means it's gotta be better than whatever the garbage 1.0 version was. Um, this one just has two different sizes, which is plenty for me. I generally use the medium, which is uh, size for 6105 frets. That's a, a fret profile. Um, and then they have a large or extra large for 6100. So um, I use a 6105 on this. And what I like about this is, first of all, ergonomically, I really like the way this is designed. Um, but this is not an abrasive like the Baroque. This is a file. And so this creates a much cleaner uh, finished product. I don't have to start as high or uh, as low a grit of sandpaper um, when I'm polishing the frets. So this thing works really, really great. There's more expensive stuff out there that may work better, but so far this has worked really well for me. So this is, this is again, linked in the bio, bought it on Amazon. Like I buy just about everything. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this file and run it across those spots where um, we filed away material and it's flat now. And we're gonna do that just until we see a very thin line across the top. Um, and once we do that, then the crowning is done and we'll go on to polishing. And that's it, that was so easy. Man, this thing makes such short work of it. I really love this. Um, can't recommend that highly enough. Um, so what we're gonna do now is polish the frets, or actually, we're not gonna polish the frets, are we? Because we had sharp fret ends. <laughs> so we're not gonna do the polishing quite yet. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna clean up the ends of these frets. And that's super simple, but I do have a special tool for that. It's not super expensive. Um, and you don't have to have it, you can do it with other tools, but if you can get this, highly recommend it. Um, this again is a Stumac tool, um, but this is the fret dress file, or the fret end dress file. Um, and it is just a very, very fine file. Um, one side of this, uh, so you got your, you know, you've got your file on this side, you got your file on this side. This edge is flat. This edge is rounded with no file on it. So that means you can take that and roll that along your fretboard edge without marring it. And so what we're gonna do is very simply, uh, rounded side down, I'm gonna come across the fret from this side and then kind of round it over. And I'm gonna round over the edges of these frets and I'm gonna go all the way down, I'll do that side, then that side, then I'll flip the neck around and I'll do both sides of the fret. We're just gonna just take the kind of the sharp edge off of that and um, then we'll uh, then we'll polish the frets and then we'll come back and deal with a little bit of fret sprout that we had. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do this. Let me do a couple kind of with you watching if you wanna watch from above. Let me move my jar o Allen wrenches out of the way. You can never have enough of those. Um, and uh, again, I'm rounded side down and I'm just coming over just like that. Don't have to go crazy. You're just a couple passes will do it. That's it. And already I can feel that that fret feels so much better than the rest. I'm gonna go all the way down, 
flip it the other side and do the whole thing, all right? This is like a super simple thing you can do that makes a huge difference when you're actually playing. Okay, that does it for that. Um, we've got those rounded off. We'll pay them a little more attention once we get the um, to get them polished, get the tape off, and um, look at the fret sprout, and we'll see which ones might need a little bit more work. But that's a good starter. So uh, there are a ton of ways we're gonna um, polish the frets. Ton of ways you can do this. I mean, really. I mean, sandpaper. There's fret erasers, there's all kinds of things, and, and I'll use different things uh, for different types of applications. If I had a bunch of scratches in these, and I don't, because of the types of files I'm using and the, the process, if I was doing a complete fret level and crowning every single fret or whatever, I'd probably go in with progressively finer sandpaper, and then I love the micro mesh stuff. You can get the sample packs um, on Amazon, which are awesome. Um, and you, that goes up to like 12,000 grit or something where, I mean, it's a mirror finish and really great with polish. Um, for the purposes of this guitar, I'm not gonna go into all that depth on this one. We'll do that at some point. Um, but I'm just gonna use a tried and true standard steel wool. Now, uh, I, uh, this is quad aught or four zero steel wool. It's the finest stuff you can get at the store. Um, and this is gonna do a really nice job and it's gonna be super quick. However, I will tell you, this stuff makes a mess because this stuff comes off in shards. So a couple things. One, if you're gonna use steel wool, it's a good idea to put something down to set the neck on, which I'm gonna get a piece of cardboard to do. That way you can clean up all these little shavings after the fact. Um, and it's best not to do this when the neck is attached to the guitar. That's part of the reason I detached the two. Um, one, it's easier to work on the neck when it's detached, but second, you don't want these little bits of metal getting on your pickups. They will stick to the magnets and it is so hard to get them off and it can cause problems for you. So um, best to use this when the neck is off the guitar. However, you can cover your pickups with tape and do that and I've done that on like a set neck guitar, other things where I was gonna use this. Um, just be really, really careful with it because you don't want to get all these little shavings into uh, the pickups on the guitar. So I'm going to grab a piece of cardboard and all I'm doing is just taking the steel wool and running it over the top. That's it. So we'll speed through that too. I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera. I don't, I don't know if you can see that or if you can see it from above. But can you tell the difference? Fret polishing is such a satisfying thing to see it go from, like if you can see it, that fret is rough. That up has not been polished and that down has. And I mean, it's almost a mirror finish. Steel wool really does a good job of this. Um, and uh, I don't. sometimes I would come back in after the steel wool with a higher, grit, but I don't think I'm going to do that in this case. But uh, yeah, man, that makes such a difference. That's just so pretty. Let's get them finished. Okay, that's it. I'm just going to wipe it down a little bit. Um, like I said, there are a lot of other ways to do this. Um, different method systems, things you can buy. Um, and I've used most of them. Um, and this works for simple stuff. Uh, I think it was um, Phil McKnight from uh, Know Your Gear, which is a great guitar channel, by the way. I really like him. He's such a nice guy. And I don't think you understand, under, I don't think you can understate the value of just being nice and kind. And he seems very much that way. And he does great videos. And um, so I love watching him. But I think he did one where he took a bunch of different fret polishing systems and kind of tested them and then said what he liked about them or didn't like or which ones worked for what applications. He did fret racers and he did um, he did steel wool, I think, and he did 
um, the micro mesh um, sanding, uh, I think the lizard spit system, like there's other stuff out there. So um, anyway, and uh, man, uh, he did a great job. So if you're wondering about that, maybe go check out his channel um, to see that video. So I'm just gonna get this kind of cleaned off. And then a um, little trick, by the way, I'm gonna toss, I just throw stuff off camera. Um, magnets, keep magnets around, they're super handy. And I just take my magnet and run it across, run it across the cardboard to get the worst of it. And then just kinda, I run it along without touching, just kinda getting it close to the, make sure I kinda get everything, all the little bits and pieces. And then I can actually just, this is really satisfying too. Uh, I just kinda peel it off of the magnet. Like that's all, I mean you can see that, that's all, uh, uh, steel wool that's come off of different things. I haven't cleaned it in a little while, but uh, yeah, just clean all the pieces off the magnet. And let me get this thrown away. Well, now we have a neck that has level frets, a level fretboard right now, and um, has we've rounded off the edges of the frets. And the beautiful thing about this tape is it's kept everything clean for us too and protected the fretboard. So what we're gonna do now I'm going to pull the tape off and then we'll look at the fret ends. One little side uh, note of doing the, um, doing the tape on there is it actually does pull out dirt. <laughs> so it actually gives you a little bit of head start on cleaning the fretboard as you do this. So we do still have a little bit of fret sprout. It's not bad actually, or just rolling those edges helped a little bit with just the feel on the ends of those frets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my fret end dressing file and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna hit right along the edges here, okay? And now I would do this a little bit differently uh, if we were dealing with a, a maple fretboard. Um, rosewood because this top part is generally is not finished or um, it doesn't have a special finish on it. Um, if you you know go a little bit overboard, and you, you take it down just a little bit. When you oil your fretboard, you just hit those edges and everything is good. Um, when you have a lacquered maple neck, you got a little bit of a different animal. But we're dealing with rosewood or palfaro maybe. I'm not sure exactly what this is. Um, so I'm gonna go, go down and I'm gonna actually hit it from the top and I'm just gonna roll it a little bit over the edge on each one of these. Anywhere that I feel like the tang, the little tang at the bottom is sticking out, um, I'm gonna get those. And then I'm gonna look at my corners right here and see if there's anywhere that just needs a little bit of a touch up. And I'm gonna do that very, very carefully. Um, and, uh, make sure that just everything is, is nice and clean. All right. Hey, that feels really good. You know, all you're really doing is giving it some attention. The question that often gets asked, like, what's the difference between a Mexican Stratocaster and an uh, American Stratocaster from Fender? Or what's the difference between an Epiphone and a Gibson? Or what's the difference between a Starcaster and a, a Fender? And in some cases, it's, you know, quality of materials or other th other things like that. But in many cases, what makes a $2,000 guitar different than a $1,000 guitar? Um, in a lot of cases, it is attention to detail. It is the time, the human hand time spent finishing a fret end or whatever. When you're pumping out a guitar that this one's probably, I don't know, $199 new, probably is like the MSRP on it. Um, 
yeah, they're just not going to spend a lot of time making sure the fret ends are good. They just, they're not. They, they can't make that work financially. So if you take something though, and you put the time into it, you can take something that's not great and you can make it, this feels really good, <laughs> really good, smooth. You're never going to feel a sharp fret. You're never going to get cut. It's not going to hurt. And this is great. So um, we're almost done with this. The last thing that we're going to do with this neck is I want to clean the fretboard, um, which is very simple. And then we're going to oil it so that this thing is basically done other than the nut we have to replace. It's basically done and ready to marry up with the body when the time comes. So what are we going to clean it with? Let me get it few things we need for this process. And you. Okay. So, love these blue shot towels, by the way. And they're expensive, so I have to make them go a long way. So I do that. And we end up with little quarter sheets. Isn't that great? Um, so I get four sheets out of every single one. Um, so what we're going to use to clean the fretboard uh, is simply isopropyl alcohol. So don't drink this stuff. This is 70%. Um, there's different percentages you can get, but just get this at like the uh, grocery store. You can get it at the drugstore or whatever. And then I like to use a toothbrush. These things are like the greatest little tools to use all over the shop. Uh, my wife wanted to clean her sneakers earlier. and She's like, do you have like a brush or something out in the shop that I can use? I was like, yes, I do. And I handed her a toothbrush. <laughs> so works great. So I dip it right down in there, kind of shake the uh, excess off and kind of dab it because I don't want it to pool here. Um, but this fretboard's actually already fairly clean since we did the, the tape on it. And I'm just going to brush its teeth. That's it. Let it get down in there. The nice thing about the isopropyl alcohol is that it's pure and it dries very quickly. So you know, the grime gets, tends to get right up along next to the frets themselves. So I'm just getting in there. And usually the grime is worse uh, down this way on the guitar. Because that's where most people spend most of their time when they're playing. This is just going to help to pull out any other oils or anything that are there. This, uh, like I said, this neck is not that grimy. The frets were bad, um, but the fretboard itself is not. Like, like I said earlier, I'm not sure that this guitar was played a lot. So, and we're just gonna do that. And I use the fret markers to remind myself where I am. So good. Let's put this right here. That's it. That one was pretty easy. And by the way, I love this stuff. I use this all the time. Um, great for cleaning. It's not, you know, it's chemical compound. It's not going to mess anything up. It's just good clean cleaning. So, couldn't do that again if I tried. If, uh, you know, again, cleaning is sort of the same thing as sanding or polishing as far as I'm concerned. Start with the um, least aggressive thing that you can possibly use and then work up from that if it doesn't work. So start, you know, a lot of things start with water, start with soap and water, then go to isopropyl alcohol and then, you know, on up from there to other things if you need to, but uh, I just know that this you know, isopropyl alcohol works really well for fretboards. So um, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna oil the fretboard now that it is clean. Um, and again, this is one of those things where there's a lot of debate over what you should use or you shouldn't use. And again, I am all about using the most pure thing that you can use um, and with the least amount of additives and all that. So a lot of people say lemon oil, which is Fine. Um, a lot of companies sell that as a product to use for oiling your, your rosewood unfinished fretboards. Um, but, uh, you know, even that has an additive in it, lemon, <laughs> So, which I know is a cleaning agent, so that helps to do the cleaning and the oiling at the same time. 
Um, but we already did the cleaning. So I like to use mineral oil. It's the simplest thing you can use as far as I'm concerned. Um, and it basically is the same thing as lemon oil. I think the lemon oils are made, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments if you want to, but I'm pretty sure they're mineral oil and lemon. So um, this is the, the more basic form. And this stuff, you can buy an entire bottle. This is 16 fluid ounces. Uh, you get it in the laxative section at the, um, at your at the drugstore so you got to deal with you know that as you go to the counter and they wonder why you're buying mineral oil but um this stuff is fantastic does an incredible job i use it on all my guitars i've used it for a very long time uh these bottles will last you forever and they're like i don't know this was seven dollars or something so i don't need to spend money on all that stuff online if you can get some this down at the drugstore and it'll last for basically forever um i had another one that was about half empty i loaned it to a friend because he wanted to, to use it i was singing its praises and i never got it back so i had to start a new bottle <laughs> so all we're going to do here it's got a freshness seal on the top you can see that from the top and i just poke a hole i think that's the easiest way to do it it's the way i do it with all my oils that i use around the shop but we're just going to put a little bit onto that cloth and uh, i'm just gonna not a lot i'm just gonna dab it all the way up the all the way up the fingerboard, okay? And just try to, I don't wanna, you don't wanna flood it because um, you don't want oil getting under the frets or anything like that. And I'm just gonna work it, work it in all the way up. Once I get one coat on, I'm just gonna hit it quickly with a second coat. Now I'm gonna let that just kind of soak in for a minute or two. Um, and then I will come back and just give it a wipe off. And so anything that doesn't soak in, anything that's sitting on the top, I'll come back and just wipe that off. Um, but that's it on the neck. The neck is good to go. Um, I don't see anything else we need to do other than when I go through and just do a general cleaning on this, I'm gonna kind of polish up the tuner buttons and stuff. Um, but everything else is good to go other than that knot we have to replace. So I'm going to keep saying that because I don't want to forget it and get to the end and be like, oh, now I got to wait. You know, that's the worst. So I'm going to let that sit and let it dry and or not dry, but soak in a little bit. And then I'll take the, the, the top off of it. Um, and uh, yeah, then the neck is going to be good to go. Uh, in our next video, we will get into the body. We got some electronic stuff to do, just some general cleanup stuff to do. Not a lot there. And on that video, we may put the whole thing together too and go ahead and do the setup. Um, maybe by the end of the next video, we'll have this thing ready to rock. Hey, okay? thanks for joining me today. Uh, again, I'm John, this is Garage Guitars. And until next time, enjoy your guitars. Mm -hmm.